What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. Yes, I'm Tony. And uh, today is Sunday, and I am wearing my Rolex 36 millimeter Wimbledon dial date just. Awesome watch, man. My favorite date just, man. And I got a new mic, so I'm testing that. Uh, yesterday I did the video because I've got the new phone and the new camera. Everyone says the quality is much better. Um, the mic I used yesterday, um, I was surprised it, it worked because the, it's the, the input jack for the phone is different than the, the iPhone 13. And my regular mic, which has a wire, doesn't fit. Um, and I, I, I have a bunch of wireless mics and I don't generally like wireless mics as opposed to the direct signal you get from uh, a wire a wire or you know a microphone with a wire same goes with music you know when, when i was touring a lot i hated the wireless systems that we used um they were necessary they just put it that way but i always prefer to just have a cable so let's roll the intro we're going to talk about hype watches and my two most worn watches All right <laughs> Talking time pieces with Tony. Talking time pieces with Tony. Okay, so hopefully this mic is better than the other wireless mics that I have, but we'll see. You guys can let me know. Um, one of the things, you know, I was going to talk about was hype watches. Everyone's into hype watches, you know, and this is why you don't want to buy a hype watch, especially if you haven't been in the, the game for any period of time. Um, the way I can sort of compare it to is like Christmas, you know, let's say you're not a big watch collector and you're just new to it, or you jumped on the bandwagon because of, you know, the whole with COVID and everything like that. And you're now all of a sudden, oh my God, I got to have a Batgirl. I got to have a Batman. I got to have a Pepsi. I got to have a Daytona. What can I do? What can I do? I'm on the, I'm on the wait list for this. I'm on the wait list for that. I'm on the wait list. I'm on the wait list. And it's a lot of that sort of fear of missing out, wondering if you're ever going to get it. And I apologize if there's any TV action going on in my lenses here, but I'm watching the Indy 500. <laughs> so, um, but the whole thing is, is that, you know, we wait and we wait and we wait and then you get your watch. Okay. And the, the, the comparison is like Christmas. You know, a lot of people love Christmas. Me personally don't care about it. It's just certain things with me, but you know, you wait and you wait and you wait, you got the whole season, you got the music, you go to the mall, the Christmas, everything, Christmas spirit, Christmas, everything, whatever. And then Christmas day comes and you get a gift or two or five or 10, whatever it is. And then, and then it's over just like that. It's gone. It's like, oh, well, that was rather, you know, uneventful to a certain extent. You love all the build up to it, the shopping, the Christmas music, everything. And then when it comes, it's kind of like, huh, you know? And the way that I look at it is like when you're looking at hype watches, you're building your weight, you're, you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. And then you get your watch. And then maybe realize it was that like the 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 socks that your grandma gave you or something. You're like, what the fuck am I gonna do with this? You know what I mean? Um, so when when you're buying the watches, like for me, all right, I'll give you a perfect example. I've been a huge Rolex fan for as long as I can remember when I was a kid, you know, and I equate that to my love for tennis and, and Wimbledon and everything, you know. So I know going into it what I already love and what I already don't love. You know, if you're buying something just on the spur of it, and I've done this plenty of times, trust me, I have. I've, I've gone into my AD and gone, oh my God, that is beautiful. I got to have it. And then freaking three days later, go, why the fuck did I buy this, right? Pardon my language. Can I say this? Um, you know, like I did that with the Breitling top time. I just got, I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. This is the only chronograph I'll ever need or want, whatever. Nice blue dial, it's gorgeous and whatever. And then all of a sudden, I wanted nothing to do with it, you know? And that was the spur of the more moment by. This is the mistake, so I have to say it's a mistake, but I generally know what I like and don't like. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you love chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream and whatever it is. And then you say, well, I'm going to try that pistachio ice cream. Uh, and then you realize it's 
whatever. I don't know, you know, and you get bored with things. You know what I mean? We all have our honeymoon uh, period, you know, with our with our watches and we look for something new. But also we have to look for something that we can live with, whether there's a honeymoon phase period or whatever um, or not. You, you've, it's something you have to enjoy and you have to love for a long period of time. Now, when I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So when it comes to um, certain watches like like Rolex, I love my Rolex, but I don't always want to wear them. You know what I mean? I love, I love. I mean, I, I you know, I've, I've loved the, the day just ever since. Uh, like I say, I was, I was young. It's my favorite Rolex line is the Datejust. You know, so I have the OP, you know, and then the OP green, it's like the hype, it's the hype, it's the hype. When these fucking watches came out, you know, the turquoise blue, the coral red, the pink, the mustard yellow, um, and the green, you know, were super sought after. And these are still trading much higher than retail, I think, you know, but you get it and you're, you're like, cool. I still love it because I'm a Rolex fan, but some people, they get their Rolex and they're like, oh, now what? And then they sell it. It's another reason why there's so many of these watches on the secondary market. They buy them or they realize they couldn't afford it. And, and, it, and it was all about the hype. You know, it's like, like I say, it's buying something because of the hype. And then once you have it, you're kind of like, eh, you know, you realized you were better off with an IWC Mark 20 or a Hamilton even, you know, something like that or a Citizen, whatever watch it may be. That's why I always recommend when you're starting your watch journey that you really need to start with cheaper watches and work your way up learn to appreciate the brand that you really want not just say hey rolex are now on my radar and that's what i want like when someone sends me a question like hey do you think i should just save for that rolex before buying a tso or whatever it is and i'm like no buy the fucking tso's and the seiko's whatever else you have to buy to get to that level it'll you'll appreciate it a whole lot more if you do it that way, then if you go straight to the top, you kind of like bust your nut and you're like, oh, well now what? You know, it's, it's just one of those things, you know? So enjoy the ride to get to where you want to go, right? Once you've been in watches for any period of time and you start to understand different brands, what it is you like, what you really like, not what everyone else thinks you like, not what every other YouTuber tells you what you have to like or don't like, it's what you like. Because if it was all about hype, I wouldn't have any of the watches that I have. I'd have bought all these other YouTuber watches. I gotta have a Pepsi. <laughs> GMT Master 2. What about that elusive Daytona that you can't get? So what? You know? But they're beautiful watches. So when it gets down to it, and you've been doing this for a while, and you've gone through, and you've overspent, and you've made the mistakes, and, and you finally realize what it is you like, then you're not going to give a shit what anyone else thinks. And you're going to buy the watches you love. So let's, that takes me to the, the two watches I wear the absolute most out of my collection. I know you know what one of them is going to be. And you'd be correct when I say it's the Zenith Pilot El Primero. Three hand. This is my daily. Every single day I wear this watch. The other one, believe it or not, it's Cartier Pasha. This is about the second most worn watch I have that I wear. And I wear this daily, you know, when I get home or whatever, or I'll wear it out. I, you know, I'll, you know, I wear them both a lot. I wear the Zenith more, but I wear the Pasha probably the second most. Now, keep in mind, I've said this, the Zenith is just an under the radar everyday watch, super legible. You know, you're wearing an $8,000 watch, 7,800 bucks. And, you know, only you know what it is. And that's awesome. That's what I love about that. Now, keep in mind when you wear the Pasha, it's a little bit more sort of, whoa, looks a little more expensive than the 7300 bucks that the watch costs. Um, and it looks really good. It's classy. It's a Gerald Genta design. I really like that. You know, some people don't, I don't care about Gerald Genta. I, I personally don't either, but he was an icon in what he did and uh, designed some pretty iconic watches, including the Pasha. This is not a hype watch. You know, you're going to get into the point where you love watches when you again you're not buying the hype you're buying it because you love it you're buying it because of the case the dial the movement whatever it may be do you like a strap do you like a bracelet 
I have always preferred straps, except for Rolex, I always prefer the bracelet. These watches are extremely comfortable. This one's just beautiful. I mean, this one, you go out and you wear it. It's, I went to an event, not an event, it was more of like a party a few weeks ago. And I've got whatever watch I want to wear, but I wore this. And man, I tell you, I got a lot of comments at the table. You know what I mean? Uh, compliments, sorry. Um, and I didn't wear it for that purpose either. But it just looks so classy and sophisticated. You wear a Rolex, it's fine too. Um, but at the same time, once you get into it, you never think between, you know, when you start spending $8,000 on a watch that essentially no one knows what it is, then you know you've gotten to that point. You can't always buy a watch because of what a lot of people think of the investment. Well, a Rolex holds its money. Yeah, it does. You know, Pateks hold the money. No, they don't. Only certain pat Pateks do. You get nailed hard on some of the pat Pateks as far as a secondary market, the way, you know, if you buy a new one and then it drops. But, you know, Vacheron Constantin, oh my gosh, they came out with an overseas with a green dial. I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to have it. And then you get it and you realize that green dial sucks. It's too dark. It's like, like the Cartier Santos green. And the Cartier Santos blue doesn't work as well as the uh, Cartier Santos with the white silver opaline dial. I mean, that's the whole thing. So it's always about buying what you love. Don't buy the hype. If you love hyped watches like the GMT Master or the Daytona or whatever it is, make sure you really love that watch. Don't buy it because you're listening to some stupid YouTuber telling you what you have to like and what you don't have to like. I say stupid YouTuber, I'm, 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 I'm talking about myself too, you know? Um, it's, it's too many people, especially the influencers on YouTube, they get, a lot of them get paid. You know, Rolex doesn't pay them. You know, Vacheron won't pay them. Patek won't pay them. But some brands will. And because of that, or they'll get a free watch out of it, they'll, they'll hype the shit out of it. Make it sound like you have no idea about watches unless you check this watch out. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't buy into it. I've been into watches longer than some of these people have been born. You know what I mean? And so it's like, and I laugh at some of it. And it's just, I, I laugh at it because, you know, in the psychology of how it works, you know what they're trying to do. It's for instance, I'll take um, CRM Jewelers. I mean, I like their channel. I don't watch all of them. I think the sun is kind of a little, what, it doesn't matter. But they have a customer that comes in the store and, they, and this guy wants a Datejust. And they're like, yeah, Datejusts are great watches. They're great entry-level watches. But you're going to outgrow that and you'll want to get something like a sub. So, you know, think about it, what, but what you want. Now, what that person didn't realize is what was put into their head, unbeknownst to them, that they're going to outgrow a freaking Datejust. <laughs> are you kidding? outgrow a day just this isn't a fucking pair of diapers this isn't a pair of children's shoes this is a freaking ten thousand dollar eight nine thousand dollar watch that so many people would love to have you know and i hear things like that when i hear entry level it, it puts that in your head like oh i don't want to start where the where the peasants start i want to go here I, I want to go straight for the Submariner. And a lot of people don't even know what this, I, I don't even know what the Submariner was. I, all I know is I need a dive watch now when all I really wanted was a date just. So when you think about it, and this has kind of been a little bit of a rant, but when you're going for these sort of sought after watches and people go, well, that's a green OP. It's not sought after. Yes, it is. And remember when they came out, just remember when they came out, these things, we're at thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars on the secondary, and these are still going over retail. These were twenty thousand dollars on the secondary. They're floating around sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. But you know, and it's not about that, and it shouldn't be about that. I'm just merely stating that's where it's at. They're still hyped. So buy what you love. Buy a watch that doesn't matter if it's got any secondary value. Granted, I understand that too. So. That being all said, I appreciate you guys. I really do. And I, and I thank you for all your comments. Um, in the comments and everything like that, and the sub people subscribing, it really makes me you know, motivated to stay doing this. Sometimes I don't want to keep doing it, but I, I 
and I say I don't, I always do, but I, I, it's a hard thing. I, you know, I get nothing out of this, you know, it's, I'm not here to, uh, I want you guys to understand more about watches, especially if you're new into watches. I get a lot of you uh, comments of I'm new into it and I'm trying to figure out what I, what I want. Tell me what I want. And I can't tell you what you want. Only you can figure out what you want and what you like. And that's why I suggest starting at a lower level of, and when I say a lower level, I'm not trying to be condescending, but like a Tissot, a guess watch, a fossil watch, something, you know, a Seiko. Just for the fact that you like watches is a win-win. You know what I mean? And... I appreciate anyone who wears any type of watch, even an Invicta, as long as you don't have that Invicta pride that a lot of those Invicta owners have. I don't care what you wear. But all I care about is that you enjoy it and you enjoy the hobby. And don't let any other YouTuber or anyone else turn you off from watches because of what they're trying to tell you. Or brands. I mean, you know, whatever it may be. Anyway, you guys, I, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend.